It's been about a month since we tore down Sam's Titan XP for our liquid cooled hybrid build and we're returning today to fully review the Titan X Pascal as a gaming device. Our first content looked at thermal and frame rate performance when under the stock cooler versus our custom liquid solution, proving that the Titan XP improved its clock rate by an average of about 200 megahertz just by using a better cooler. That's no overclock necessary, by the way. It's just better cooling solution, netting us better clock rates and thus a better frame rate, at least marginally. But today we're properly going over the thermals, the frame rate in various games that we didn't cover previously for the Titan X Pascal card. And then we'll also talk overclocking and look at it as a standalone solution without our liquid cooling help to see if it's worth your purchase. Before getting to that, this Titan XP coverage is brought to you by Antec and their new Cube Mini ITX case designed by Razer, supports full custom loop liquid cooling in an SFF box. You can find more information on this case in the link below. The GTX Titan X Pascal is built more for production it seems like than gaming, but that hasn't stopped Nvidia from haloing the card as the best for gaming out there. And it is a $1,000 plus card depending on where you buy it and what time of day it is, I guess. And today we're looking at the temperature and gaming performance, things like that. We're not looking at production workloads, CUDA acceleration, Premiere, or anything like that. It's strictly gaming because that is how it has been marketed pretty heavily lately. So we're gonna review it from a gaming standpoint. And this card, just as a reminder, was a loaner provided by, by one of our viewers and readers. So thank you for that, Sam. This was not uh, an Nvidia sample because I guess, I don't know, they didn't want to sample us a Titan XP. So this card, the XP uses a GP102 GPU, that is a Pascal architecture GPU on the board. GP102, it's the largest Pascal chip presently available on a GeForce card. It's got more GPCs, more SMs, all of that stuff, we'll talk about that momentarily. The only larger Pascal chip presently available is the GP100, which is only available on the Tesla P100 accelerator, that is not a gaming card by any stretch of the imagination. That is a deep learning and simulation card. So very different market. GP102 though is the top of the line, at least in the gaming space. GP102 hosts a total of six GPCs for 28 SMs and 3584 CUDA cores at 128 cores per SM. GP102 follows GP104's architecture, splitting GPCs mostly into sets of five SMs rather than following the denser GP100 SM alignment of 10 multiprocessors per GPC. We talk about that in our GP100 deep dive article and video. This architectural decision is because the GP102 chip isn't meant to handle the same FP64 double precision and FP16 half precision tasks that you'd find on a Tesla P100 accelerator, which again is built for simulation and deep learning applications. Instead, GP102 focuses its cores on FP32, useful for gaming and production applications almost exclusively. Also like GP104-400, the Titan XP runs eight TMUs per SM, totaling 224 texture map units. Clock rate natively operates at 1531 megahertz with the stock cooler often hitting 1700 megahertz or higher during load. Note also that we pushed to nearly 2000 megahertz in our liquid cooled content coverage stuff. And that was with no overclock, just as a reminder. So hitting nearly 2K, on the frequency range just by adding liquid and memory of course operates at 10 gigabits per second with GDDR5X from Micron. That is not news to anyone. Cache size also plays a big role in the Titan XP. It's expanded to 3072 kilobytes over 2048 on the GTX 1080 and VRAM on board is 12 gigabytes for the Titan XP versus eight gigabytes for the GTX 1080, both using the same G5X 10 gigabit per second native memory. If this architecture discussion interests you, you want to learn more about what these terms mean, hit the article linked in the description below where we go into all of it and define better what the acronyms and initialisms stand for. Let's move on to testing. Note that all thermals, FPS, noise, and overclocking tests were performed before our initial teardown of the GPU, so the only difference you'll see in numbers emerges after we applied a liquid cooler to the Titan XP, but all the initial numbers were collected prior. We've also already produced that content, but we'll revisit the thermals briefly here. For the rest of the testing methodology and for additional tests, again, hit that article link in the description below. Recapping the basics of the thermal results, the reference GTX Titan X, which is basically the only card, design hits its thermal limit at 83 to 84 Celsius GPU diode temperature non-delta, and that's what creates the boost specification of 1531 megahertz. The clock actually automatically boosts higher through GPU Boost 3.0, 
when that thermal limit is bypassed by superior cooling, again explained elsewhere. And our hybrid mod, for instance, brings us down to 19.85 Celsius delta T from 59.4 on the reference cooler, which uses just a vapor chamber and blower fan. That's a reduction of 40 C for the load temperature. As for idle temperatures, those are a little lower than the 1080 for a few reasons, if it confuses you. One, the die size of the Titan XP is 471 millimeters squared on the GP102 chip, whereas the GP104 chip is 314 millimeters squared. This extra surface area on GP102 does actually help dissipate heat in a substantial way. And then for liquid testing, we also improved our implementation by keeping the base plate on the Titan X hybrid, not done for the 1080 hybrid. Keep in mind also that these results are for the out-of-box product, so there's not even overclocking, and we've already dropped the thermals by 40 C. You can learn more about the endurance, performance, and other thermal tests in the article linked below. There are a couple of AIB partner card Titan Xs out there that we don't have. Asus has got one, EVGA is making a few, but this is a quick look at what the reference card offers. We tested GTA 5 at 4K with very high and ultra settings, but threw in a 1080p test just to demonstrate a point. At 1080p, we're clearly hitting a CPU bottleneck and other component bottlenecks that's limiting GPU performance. Titan XP is operating at 136 FPS average with 95 and 85 FPS 1% and 0.1% lows respectively, which is trailed just barely by the GTX 1080 suite that we've got on the bench. If you've got plans to buy either device between the two we're comparing here, it's probably worthwhile to invest in a higher resolution screen just because Really, you shouldn't be playing 1080 with these cards. That point made, let's move on to 4K testing. The GTX Titan X is outclassed by SLI GTX 1070s in this benchmark, which jointly post a 79 FPS average against the Titan X's 73 FPS average. The single Titan X, as is often the case with multi-GPU configurations, outputs better frame times than the SLI cards. And even still, the performance metrics are high enough on each device to be more or less identical with regard to user perception of frame rate throughput. The difference between the configurations is about 8%, just for reference, and the GTX 1080 AIB partner cards, meanwhile, operate at 59 FPS average or thereabouts, with a gap of approximately 23% from the Titan XP. Below these, the Crossfire RX 480s rest at 58 FPS average, with the GTX 1080 FE at 56 FPS average. We test Doom with both OpenGL and Vulkan, the latter of which is presented as an average in comparative charts. Let's start with just the OpenGL results. At 1440p with ultra settings, the Titan XP is posting an average FPS of 138, coupled with nearly 100 FPS 1% lows and about 89 FPS 0.1% lows. The Gigabyte GTX 1080 Extreme Water Forest card that we reviewed recently is next in line, and that's at 128 FPS average and similar lows. It's not until we get to the 1080 FE that there's a reasonable gap created almost entirely by the clock rate difference between all the cards where the 1080 FE pushes 109 FPS average. For Vulcan at 1440p, the comparison shows an FPS output of 155 average for the Titan XP, and that's followed by a GTX 1080 at about 128 FPS average. That's a performance difference of roughly 21% or 35% for the FE variant and we need to tax the cards a little harder to show any visible degradation in performance, so we're moving on to 4K. With OpenGL only, we've only got a few cards present on the bench for Doom testing, and the GTX Titan XP pushes an average FPS of 81 with lows north of 60 FPS. The GTX 1080 reference card is performing at 60 FPS average with 51 FPS 1% lows and 49 FPS 0.1% low metrics. Vulcan posts the Titan XP and GTX 1080 at roughly the same performance output since we're becoming bound by the resolution more than anything. Moving on to Mirror's Edge Catalyst at 1440p, stock Titan XP performance runs at approximately 111 FPS average with low frame rates reasonably timed to the average and constantly above 60 FPS. The Gigabyte GTX 1080 Extreme Water Force card, along with all the other GTX 1080s, rests at 95 FPS average and the reference 1080 is at 89, or about 24% slower than the Titan XP. Moving to 4K, the Titan X Pascal card is able to sustain high quality settings at 3840 by 2160 with an FPS of 60.3 FPS average, about four to five ahead of the liquid cooled 1080 GPUs and five FPS ahead of SLI GTX 1070s. The Seahawk and 1080 Gaming X both run at around 51 FPS average with a 1070 Gaming X way down at 40.67 average and 30 FPS lows. For more charts, including Metro Last Light and Mordor and a couple of other games, hit the link in the description below. For now, let's move on to overclocking. 
This is our overclock stepping table with the GTX Titan XP card with maxed out power target and no core offset if you look closely in the top few rows. The average clock rate operates at about 100 megahertz higher than stock with a 100% target, but we're still thermally limited. Regardless, the maximum stable overclock finalized at around 1911 megahertz average frequency with a 175 megahertz offset to core and 450 offset to memory. The peak clock was 1923.5 megahertz, briefly anyway, and this was with a 3500 RPM fan speed, so noise levels are getting a bit more significant. The liquid cooled variant for the Curious was able to sustain a maximum overclock of 2012 megahertz, or 1974 megahertz average, and here's a quick look at overclocking performance. We're seeing fairly substantial gains in some titles, nearing 10 FPS or more in GTA 5 and Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Just to sort of reiterate our hybrid research content for the Titan XP, this card, NVIDIA is technically operating within spec because the spec says 1531 megahertz, it's often boosting to 1700 plus in gaming. But the thing is, again, the spec could be higher and it doesn't require retuning the GPU or using a different GPU 100 whatever processor, it just requires a better cooler. Putting on this reference cooler, although they say it's high quality and really it's not bad as far as reference coolers go, but putting it on this card seems sort of wasteful because you can get an extra 3.5 to 5% performance out of it just by using a better cooled card and that can be done with liquid or it could be done with air. And the thing is because the Titan X is sort of an Nvidia exclusive model, it's really difficult to get AIB partner cards. There aren't many of them. I know EVGA has got a hybrid model they're making or have made, and there might be a couple others in the works, but there aren't a lot of them. So that means the most common model will be the reference Titan XP. And that's just, it's basically, again, a 5% performance swing just for, for using a better cooler. Uh, so that's not something I was too happy about. You could sort of bypass that and I'm sure some folks would argue that you could run the VRM fan at 100% and you'd get that extra bit of performance, but that's really loud and it's just not worth it. The Titan XP is still priced north of $1,000 for the most part with the GTX 1080 resting closer to 700 these days. In its absolute best performing scenarios, the Titan XP is able to outperform the 1080 FE by roughly 30%, again, best case scenarios, and in the best case also post gains over AIB partner 1080s upwards of about 25%. But we've got to keep the bigger picture in mind. A GTX 1080 is already capable of running almost every game we've tested at 4K with roughly 60 FPS frame rates, at a minimum in some cases. And for most enthusiasts at the high end, we'd wager that's enough. An extra $300 doesn't really gain tangible frame rate improvement at this point, since we're already so high in FPS output at 1440p and in some 4K scenarios, though not all. Now that's not always true. The Titan XP does have a few specific games where its performance gains are substantial, but for the most part, the GTX 1080 makes more sense as a top of the line gaming card and is better priced for the sort of average enthusiast user. Now the Titan XP may make more sense for render and CUDA accelerated applications, but we're still waiting on more of those to support Pascal architecture before really diving into testing it. Some things like Blender have only just started adding support for Pascal. So it's still a little ways off in terms of our test suite. For games though, the 1080 is pretty good as a top of the line card. I don't really know that there's a need to go to the Titan XP uh, unless you've got some really specific use case, in which case you probably know if you already need it or not. But one last thing to throw in here is the name. So we talked about this with the GTX 1060. It's got 10% fewer SMs, half the VRAM, and it's called a 1060 three gigabyte. But there's a 1060 six gigabyte. It's got more SMs twice the RAM, I can kind of get over the VRAM difference, but the SM change alone should be enough to issue a kind of rebrand of some kind or rebadge. Titan XP is not the same problem because the spec, there's one spec, there's one SKU, it's just Titan X is the name. I've been calling it XP or Titan X Pascal this whole time. That's because the Titan XM, which used to be called the Titan X, was the Maxwell card. And if you go look anywhere online, you type in Titan X on Newegg, almost all of the results are going to be for Maxwell cards, if not all of them, and they're priced similarly. So it'd be pretty easy to accidentally buy an ASUS Titan X Maxwell card, which performs pretty differently, different architecture. And that's something to look out for, and it's something that really I wish Nvidia had enough foresight to, to not do that. Like it would, literally adding one letter to the name would have fixed that issue, Titan XP. 
and it doesn't even sound bad. It's got the gaming sound to it with XP. So uh, if you are going to buy one of these, which it's a good card, I'm not saying it's not a good card, it's just uh, it's very high performing and maybe not necessary for a lot of people. But if you're going to buy one, be careful when you look around on eBay, Newegg, things like that. Make sure you're not getting a Maxwell card. Go directly to NVIDIA's website if you want to be really safe because that's where you'll definitely get a Pascal one. So that is all for this time. As always, Patreon link the post roll video if you like this type of coverage and want to help us with more. And then subscribe for additional content coming out, as always, every day for the most part. Links in the description below for more. I'll see you all next time.